okay uh, welcome back so uh, uh, so till now we have been discussing extensively about negative feedback with integrator in the in the loop and integrator as the central element and we saw we do fairly detailed conclusions with what you know, what such a system looks like and what are the property of properties of such system let me briefly jot down the important points and then we'll move forward right so so number one was uh for for a first order system the ugb of the loop that is omega u loop okay i should be more careful here i should say first order all pole system because whatever we have done till now didn't have any zeros right the transfer function was something by a constant by uh, one pole so first order all pole system the ugb of the loop that is omega u loop is equal to the minus 3 db 3 db frequency of the closed loop system right so ugb of the open loop right open loop gain so this is uh, even though this is pretty obvious but you should be careful because if some, i mean we, i have seen in the past uh, students make this uh, sometimes get confused between ugb of the closed loop and the ugb of the open loop and vice versa right so you have to keep in mind the fact that the ugb of the closed loop doesn't really matter to us because ultimately we would want to operate where the closed loop actually has a flat gain right because ultimately if you are going towards a uh, you are going towards uh, uh, towards those frequencies where the gain of the closed loop itself is dropping then that is not something that you would in the you would you wouldn't want to operate in those frequency ranges right because ultimately it, it, with the, even with the uh, uh, with the examples that we did we wanted a gain of k over a certain bandwidth and if we have to achieve that we have to ensure that the minus 3 db bandwidth of the closed loop is at least till uh, uh, till that frequency where i can get a gain of k at least by bode approximation right so if the k drops to 1 i mean if the gain drops to 1 from k then that that is that is, that frequency is anyways that is not we are looking at so it shouldn't uh, yeah it shouldn't be of any consequence but the more important thing is that the ugb of the closed loop uh, open loop translates to the minus 3 db of the open loop because because negative feedback the assumptions that we did was negative feedback exists till omega less than equal to omega u loop and negative feedback does not exist for omega greater than equal to omega u loop now this statement is strictly not true because negative feedback always exists you have something uh, you have a wire connecting the output to the input but what i make this statement what we essentially mean is that there is no significant amount of error correcting signal that is coming back and negative feedback essentially works on the principle that error correcting signal that whatever is the signal that is coming in to the input of the error amplifier should be strong right so Uh, and the degree of strongness the distinction that we make is that if the gain is more than 1 it's strong if the gain is less than 1 it's not strong strong enough so uh, for the purpose of our first order or zero th order analysis we'll make this uh, assumption going forward all the time is that if omega is less than omega u loop negative feedback exists omega is greater than omega u loop negative feedback does not exist again we have talked about this in detail in the uh, uh, yes yeah so this whatever we have done is only for all pole first order so these assumptions will not be valid in the strictly mathematical sense for any other any other order 
then you have to find the closure transfer function. But having said that, and that is the next point, is uh, we will deal with systems, or if, even if we don't deal with system directly, we'll have to make sure that the system behaves like a first order system for us to make this assumption. Yeah, I mean, whatever, the extra stuff has to be far away from your UGB, right? So essentially, uh, this is not, again, this is not a strict mathematical derivation, but this is again a thumb rule. Uh, the thumb rule is essentially that uh, even for a higher order system, the above assumptions are valid. As long as the system or the L of S, right? So all it's the game of L of G omega or L of S. L of G omega behaves like a first order system around omega U. Right? So this is, I should caveat this. This is as a this is rule of thumb. And also I am not proving this new rule of thumb here. It's outside the scope. Uh, we'll look into this in the uh, in the advanced, ver advanced version of this course. Right? So this is something, uh, this is a statement that I made. Again, I'm saying this is the rule of thumb. So uh, take it at its face value. Uh, we will come back to it in some amount of detail when we look into a higher order system later on. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right. It has to be because, okay, so that's a good question. I mean, it all, there is a caveat to that statement also. It's strictly not mathematically true, but it's true if the loop gain is of the form of some numerator by denominator, but the denominator order is higher, higher than the numerator. In any so essentially what I'm saying is, uh, so this is this is a diversion. This is not a part of this discussion, but anyway, let me caveat it. So generally your L of S is of, always of the form of some numerator by denominator, right? So as it turns out for any, I mean, mathematically you can always put any order in N, any order in D, nobody's stopping you. But in, in, in reality, uh, the order of D is always higher than N. I mean, one of the way to argue physically is the fact that ultimately, if you push uh, push your uh, frequency to infinity, there will be some capacitor in the system which will which will force the output to go to zero, right? So at the at s highest order of s, l of s has to be zero, which means essentially the uh, order of d has to be higher than order of n uh, in in reality. And naturally, if your closed loop system is of the form of one by one plus L and all those things, then your order is determined by the order of the denominator. Okay. okay. Uh, the other thing that we, other important thing that we uh, look, uh, saw was omega u loop translates to one over the time constant of the system, right? And this is also important because ultimately we want to figure out what are the handles that we have to make a system fast or slow. In, in this case, at least for the first order system, we know that if we want to ensure that the system settles fast, that is it responds as quickly to the external exertions as you want it to, then there is a definite relationship between the loop gain or the parameters that control the loop gain and uh, and the time constant of the system okay so uh, any questions about anything that we have covered till now in the last few classes yes right yeah how does tau impact the output in the transient state right so uh, so firstly, when I say uh, this tau and all this time constant business, this time constant we is useful when you are doing step response, right? So how fast your step settles. When you are doing sinusoidal steady state response, you can assume that the sinusoid 
Firstly, when you are doing steady state, which means system has settled. Okay, input is sinusoid, but the system has settled. That is, if you look for any uh, any snapshot of time or any interval of time at time t equal to let's say one second or time t equal to from one second to two second or hundred second to hundred one second or one day to one day plus one second, you shouldn't see any difference in the outputs. So that's what is meant by system has settled, even though your input has input is input is changing. So in that rest, from that definition of sinusoidal steady state, tau doesn't have an impact. Okay, but tau will have impact when you are starting the system, right? So if you have a, a if the sinusoid is not existing from time t equal to minus infinity, you have just started the system, then the system will take some some time to settle because ultimately it's sine omega t ut. Right. So in that respect. There's, I mean, higher the tau, I mean, lower the smaller the tau, faster it will settle to its steady state. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't say transient. It should be. It, it has an impact in reaching steady state because you, your input can also be transient. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Uh, the other important thing that we saw was. Uh, the steady state error was proportional to one by L of C omega naught. This is steady state error at omega naught, right? That input can be a sinusoid at frequency omega naught. So in that case, we saw that a steady state error was uh, proportional to one over the loop gain. And that is one, uh, that, that also tells us that we would like to have as high a loop gain as possible till the bandwidth of our choice. Because, I mean, again, if you are if you are operating at frequencies where the loop gain has dropped off, then you are likely to have higher and higher steady state error. Okay. Okay, fine. So, so now let's move ahead. Uh, so there are a couple of handy, uh, handy ways of evaluating closed loop response, and that is as follows. So if you have a, So generally, if, if you can, uh, not all systems can be manufactured in this form or reduced to this form, but if you can reduce your feedback system in this particular form, then we can, this we already know, this is equal to A by one plus A beta. So this is the next standard form. The more useful form for circuit designers is the following is, I'll write it down and I'll explain the notations. So H infinity by L by one plus L. Now H infinity is essentially, this is the expected output if your loop gain is infinity. Okay, so H infinity is that is the ideal feedback condition state where you have virtual grounds and all those things valid. So you can you can look at your system and you can assume that what is the expected ideal output if the loop gain is infinity, then you can simply say I will write my uh, output in this form. That is, I will I will figure out what L is by going around the loop. And I will also figure out what H infinity will be, expected output will be when the loop gain is infinity and I'll express it in this form. Now there is, uh, there are other classes of feedback systems where you have outputs which come after some, of these, these order, right? So, I mean, this you can assume this to be a2 or whatever. Uh, so in the in these cases, what eventually ends up happening is that, uh, or rather, uh, the the way this is different from the I mean, the other the previous feedback case is is the fact that there is, there seems to be a direct path between input and output, which bypasses this seems to bypass this feedback system partially at least. Okay, so uh, so which essentially means that this equation needs to be modified. And the way uh, in literature we do it is, is, is A0 by one by one plus L, where A0 
is expected output when L is equal to zero. Okay, so essentially, uh, uh, when when your loop can doesn't exist, when there is no path, when when when, when you are only considering the forward, only considering the direct path between input and output, whatever is the transfer function, that is eight zero. And then if you already know L, then you can express it in this form. Now note that this, this, uh, this way of uh, expressing your V0 closed loop V0 over VI is true. It's true for under all conditions. However, we are mostly interested in the condition of, of when the loop gain is high, right? Because we are making feedback loop under the, under the assumption that we should be able to control everything very tightly, which means we are operating yeah, uh, uh, we are operating in the regime of L to be much higher than one. So if, if you're operating in that regime of L to be much higher than one, for all practical purposes, this will go to zero, right? So we end up using only, in most cases, we end up using only the first, first term, okay? But I mean, sometimes you will see that, I mean, if you, if you, you, you will encounter some uh, feedback system where the input is applied at various places, you might see that this age infinity L by one plus L will not give you the exact answer. So in that case, you'll have to uh, go back and check whether uh, whether there is a direct path. Even if I desensitize the feedback, if I cut the feedback out, then still whether I have a direct path between input and output. Now this becomes slightly tricky in some cases uh, because it's not uh, always obvious how to disconnect a feedback. I mean, not all electronic circuits you can express in this neat form of uh, unilateral feedback system where the signal flows in one direction. There can be cases like we, we deal with elements like resistors, capacitors, where the signal can flow in either direction. So in those cases, sometimes this becomes, uh, this becomes slightly tricky, but we'll come to that. Uh, we, we'll, we'll deal with those in some, uh, uh, with, with, uh, with, with some detail in later, in later courses, but I mean, later courses and also in later part of this course, but um, as, I, as I, I would like to point out is that don't bother about all those things too much as of now. Uh, all, you have to en all you have to ensure is that as long as L is infinity, you are getting age infinity. Okay, so that is something that we, uh, that, that is essentially the aim of this, aim of this course. Okay. Another caveat that uh, you should understand is if you read the literature and uh, Let me write it down first, then I will talk about it. So how did we find the loop gain essentially? We, the way we found out the loop gain was we broke the loop somewhere, applied a test voltage, and you see uh, what, I mean, in this case, we broke it here, applied a test voltage V test, and we saw what was coming out V return. And we said loop gain is minus of V return by V test. Now that is, even though this is valid, but this is by definition wise, this is strictly not true. The literature definition of this V return to V test is return ratio. And that makes sense, right? So we, if you go and look into literature, you will see that it is often expressed as T that is minus V return by V test. And, uh, the, the, the reason return rate T is different from L of S, it's not different for this particular block diagram. The reason, uh, strictly speaking, return ratio is not equal to loop gain is because you might have multiple loops. And if you have multiple loops, if you break the loop at different, you, I mean, you can have loops within loops in a feedback system. I mean, I can also have something like this coming here, and so on, right? You can have nested loops in the system. Then in that case, it's sometimes almost impossible to break the loop in, in such a way that the feedback is completely eliminated. Okay, so it becomes physically impossible to break the loop so that the feedback uh, becomes completely eliminated. So in that case, loop gain, the, the definition of loop gain is not right because the definition of loop gain is under the condition that the feedback is eliminated. So. So that's why uh, this return ratio T is a more appropriate term, appropriate way of expressing uh, 
it's breaking the loop and coming back the thing but again i mean i'm i'm telling you all of these things because ultimately if you go out and rest of the world uses a different convention and we are using a different convention it can be confusing later on so that's why i am giving you these definitions but again for the purpose of this course and for for the purpose of most of the circuits that you'll be using that definition of loop gain that we uh, that i talked about in the earlier classes would be good enough right so we'll stick we'll not change anything we'll stick to whatever we uh, we have been we have been doing okay okay so these are as far as conventions and definitions are concerned okay so now uh, yes which one oh, okay so this is i mean uh, this is actually pretty simple i mean you can um, go around i mean take this and solve it you'll get in this form so that is one and other way of saying is that if uh, ultimately l goes to infinity right your loop uh, your virtual um, whatever happens right even if you have this uh, forward path this path even if you have this uh, forward path if l goes to infinity it shouldn't matter because ultimately note that this is equivalent to the case where we said we are injecting something at this point in one of the earlier classes right you are injecting something at the output of the integrator if the integrator has infinite loop gain it shouldn't matter what you are injecting at its output right whatever this forward path is it should it should it should be able to nullify whatever you are injecting at the output of the forward path right because it has infinite loop gain and virtual round will hold and moment virtual round holds moment this is equal to this the output is set by the feedback path right so that is another way of seeing if l goes to infinity uh, the second term goes to zero you are left with whatever you want and if l goes to zero which means the uh, feedback doesn't exist then only the forward path should exist if there is a direct path for any frequency a is not infinity and a is not zero yeah so no gain is such that yeah in that case how do you find the age of infinity and age of zero no age of infinity and age of zero are frequency independent terms okay so if i have a i should express more strictly in this form because h infinity and h of zero is okay i shouldn't say frequency independent what i should say is that h, h infinity and h of zero are cases where under idealized cases of loop gain going to infinity you might have capacitor somewhere inductor somewhere and all those things i mean that might set your l of zero but moment you set loop gain to infinity or the return ratio in this case to infinity you will find a place where the input to the error amplifier goes to zero correct yes it yes. may not be infinity at any frequency of no no it need not be so it has nothing to do with l of s has to go to infinity h of infinity is the case where if l of s goes to infinity what is the output it practically need not go to infinity in fact practically nothing goes to infinity so but but what we the reason we want to express our outputs in this form is because we want so this is quick and dirty way of expressing the output you can you can always go around the loop write the algebra and figure out what the final output will be right but that often leads to doesn't lead to much of an intuition or conclusion that you want to derive from the circuit so the way the quick way of derive getting a conclusion is what is my expected output if the loop gain is infinity because that is what my starting that is the starting assumption of my circuit right so if what is the expected output if everything is ideal that is gain is infinity then there will be some correction factor because my outputs are not infinity so this uh, these these terms are often called correction factors yeah i'll come back to so these terms are often called correction factors so essentially you you with respect to ideal you multiply it with some correction factor and you get real so sir initially let's say that suppose The integrator is non-ideal. We will assume that P is zero. Right. So we will have the infinite loop gain at zero. Right. Yeah. The, and after that, we will. So this P is zero, and all those things are valid only when you are talking about uh, uh, DC inputs. DC inputs. Right. But let's say I have sinusoidal inputs, and you still want to figure out what your closed loop system look like, looks like. Then you may assume that whatever frequency your sinusoid is at, loop gain is infinity. right so then my expected output which we h infinity of s then you put in this l of s by 1 plus l of s term then you get the exact output 
Okay. You had a question? Yeah. Correct. In this case, yeah. If if it's uh, yeah, correct. In this particular case, it's one over beta. Yes. So, yeah, that's what expected. That is the expected output. So, in this particular case, age infinity is one over beta. You are correct. In previous case, we are log level was k. Then that case, it was k. It was k exactly right. So, in this case, age infinity is uh, uh, this. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, age infinity is one more, one over beta, and age zero is if I set everything to zero, you get a two. Right. If I just desensitize the feedback here, if I just set a to zero, then you see that uh, your v naught will be simply a two times v i. Right. So from this particular law diagram, it's easy to figure out. But the I mean the reason we express we massage our final expression in different forms is because it is useful in certain contexts uh, more than others. Okay. Right. Ah, okay, that's a good question. So his question is that uh, in real circuits, what might end up happening is that you uh, you might have multiple loops, multiple paths. Then how do you figure out what is the what is what should I set to infinity? Yeah. Right. So as it turns out, you will always see that in real circuits, as will going forward, you will see there is a specific error amplifier. You don't typically have a multiple error. Typically, you don't have multiple error amplifiers which tries to set because, again, and because of these problems, what you are alluding to, right? If you have multiple error amplifiers, then who is the boss? There can be only one boss. First case, second case, whatever doesn't matter. Okay, so only one, uh, uh, only one um, high gain, there will be one high gain block typically which sets the property of the loop. Sometimes you will see that. There's democratization. You'll have multiple small blocks which uh, which uh, decide the. I mean, if you cascade multiple of them, you get eventually get high gain. Then I can say that all these put together is a single high gain block, right? So that is a different way of looking at it. But ultimately, it boils down to the fact that you will you will be able to find some uh, circuit where you you'll be able to find a place where the input to the error amplifier will go to the box. Okay. So again, I mean, this is this might seem very hand wavy and heuristic to many of you because we haven't really delved into circuit. Promise you, we'll get there because that's essentially the essence of the course. Right? So, okay. So, so let's take this uh, this this example once and and uh, and just show you why this is useful. So we'll go back to. Our good old. Integrator circuit. <coughs> so in this case, clearly, I mean, there is no path between direct path between input and output, right? If I desensitize the integrator, the output is fully uh, disconnected from from the input, right? So it shouldn't it shouldn't matter to any of us. So in this case, the uh, the expression, I mean, the way I would like to express my output is essentially this form V0 over VI is H infinity L by one plus L. And typically this L is of the form of some low pass, right? I mean, uh, by low pass, essentially, I mean that you uh, it will be form of the form of one by some polynomial. You might have some zeros, but that is uh, that is for another day. But generally we, we express these things in the form of one by some some polynomial, so which means that it might be useful to express massage this expression a bit more and express it in this form one by one plus l, right? So that one over l becomes s by something not uh, not of the form which might be a bit unwieldy to deal with. Now, if I only know this, if I only know this, what will be my how should I approach? So h infinity is what h infinity is the ideal output when when uh, everything, I mean, when my error amplifier input is zero, right? So if the error amplifier input is zero, what is my ideal output? K, K right? K. And one by one plus one over L. What is L? 
omega u by ks, right? So it, I'll express in this form one by that. So it becomes s by omega u by k. So basically, it helps you to come up with a uh, look at the look at the circuit in whatever form, or look at the block diagram in whatever form, and give you a kind of a one-line answer as to how how you should approach the final thing without uh, writing too much of algebra. Okay. Yeah, yeah, correct, right? So sorry, thank you. So this is V not over V. So this. Is this okay? So now uh, let's okay. So the other important conclusion that I forgot to mention earlier was the fact that uh, this loop gain or return ratio. I will let's stick to loop gain. I don't want to con uh, confuse you. This loop gain is essentially a property of the loop. Okay, so it doesn't really depend on where you apply the input. It's, you can similar, I mean, similar to time constants. Right? It's a property of the loop, a property of the system. It really doesn't, doesn't depend upon where you have applied the input. You may as well desensitize the input and figure out what the time constant is. Similarly, in this case, you can desensitize the input and figure out what the loop gain is. So if loop gain is a property of the input, so I might apply the uh, loop gain is a property of the loop, then I might apply the input at any other place and expect the output to settle in the same way. Okay, so what we can do is so instead of applying the input here i will short it and i apply the input here okay so now now tell me looking into the equations that we just wrote what will be v not over vi what will be h infinity Okay, so if H infinity means again, uh, uh, when loop gain is infinity, which means this VE has to go to zero, which means this is zero, which means this is zero. If this is zero, this current is VI by R, right? And this VI, if now if this is zero, VI by R flows through K minus one R, which means V naught S will be minus of K minus one, right? No, this is zero. So this will be smaller, right? Zero minus it. So it will be minus k minus one. Okay. So so and what is the other term? Loop gain. Loop gain doesn't change. Right? Loop gain is essentially what we had earlier. So your final output V0 by VI is minus of k minus one by one plus s by u by k. Okay, so, uh, and as s tends to zero, as s tends to zero, where the loop gain is actually infinity, you get k minus one, the gain to the k minus one. By the way, do you recognize this expression under infinite gain condition? Or this configuration under infinite gain condition? Okay, let me massage you. Yeah, exactly, right? So, so essentially what I didn't, I mean, even though it should be obvious, but I didn't spell it out. So this entire configuration that you see here, right? Is essentially is op-amp. 
okay so one way of uh, one way of expressing an op, op amp is essentially having this integrator in the forward path and doing these things so if you think of this as an op amp the earlier configuration that we are doing was inverting non inverting case the the configuration that we are now doing here is essentially the inverting case yeah? where i you can assume that this is connected here and you are supposed to get a gain of k minus 1 okay but this loop gain type of expression helps you to visualize also how the output is going to going to uh, reach to minus k minus 1 okay now yes ah okay so uh, why don't you do that yourself once okay he is he is a uh, good point so let's do that once so we'll do it for the traditional case itself right so if you have omega u by s plus p right if you have omega u by s plus p so instead of this your l of s is s plus p so what will it be your h infinity shouldn't change right l oh yeah correct yeah you're right thank you so there's a forward path right your h infinity shouldn't change because h infinity by definition is the condition under which you have infinite loop gain right so if i do this form i mean if i do this expression only i mean the configuration that we just did then h infinity shouldn't change so h infinity remains what it is but your loop gain has changed so your v not over vi will be minus of k minus 1 by 1 plus k Plus, plus p. Okay, so naturally, if you set k to s to zero, you see that it's not k minus one anymore. You have some steady state error. Okay, so that is why I mean these type of hand I mean these type of massaging expressions helps in certain contexts, right? Especially for circuit designers, it helps expressing uh, the loop gains and all of these things in this format. Okay, so this is again an advice to use it. If you don't choose to use it, nothing will be wrong, just that you will have more algebra, but as long as you are correct, it should be fine. Okay, fine. Uh, now the curious case that I would want you to notice in the case that we just did is, is the fact that that's in the inverting, non-inverting case, The, uh, okay, so there seems to be a forward path, right? Even if I desensitize the loop, there seems to be a forward path, direct path between input and output. So why didn't I consider that other factor? Or not the factor, the other term, H zero term. So uh, it's slight. It can be slightly tricky if you haven't thought about it. So let me spell it out. So when I express any block diagram, express anything in a block di diagrammatic representation like this, what am I assuming? Is there an uh, inherent assumption that I'm not talking about? So I just put a block and say the gain of this block is this. Okay. And I don't give you any other information. So gain of this block is this regardless of whatever happens. And so what am I assuming? No, that is the unilateral thing, right? I'm not talking about that here. So yeah. So what type of block is this? I mean, among the sources that you know. 
Uh, okay, LTI true, but I mean, you have this voltage control, voltage source, voltage control, current source, all four of them, right? So what type of block is this now? It's a voltage control voltage. The inherent assumption is it's a voltage control voltage source. Moment I write something like this, or anybody writes something like this, the inherent assumption is that output is getting settled regard to this, to whatever value it's supposed to be, so this, with this particular gain, regardless of what the load is. Right, I can have K minus one R, I can have zero, I can have infinity, doesn't matter. This block diagrammatic representation is telling me output is always equal to input times omega U by S, which means it's a voltage source. If it's a voltage source, the output impedance is, is zero. Okay, so, so even if I remove, now when I des des to desensitize the feedback, you'll have to remove stuffs, but you have to keep the impedances as is. Right? There's, otherwise, there is no point in desensitizing anything. Right? So you will see even when, when you break the loop in this block diagrammatic representation, it's not very obvious. But uh, if I replace this with a voltage control voltage source, and I connect it with this, some gain. Uh, omega u by s times ve this is ve and i desensitize omega u over s then what will i do i will just short it i'll remove this and short it if i short it v0 is zero right since v0 becomes zero when i remove feedback so even though it seems to have a direct path between input and output it don't have any impact so the extra term, that H0 term, that's why it's zero in this particular case. But note that if this is not a voltage control voltage source, or it's not an ideal voltage control voltage source, then this H0 term will not be zero, right? So again, we'll, we'll not be too much bothered about that H0 term, but I want you to uh, take this into account in case you, when, when you come, uh, when you uh, encounter cases where, I mean, the, H infinity expression doesn't give you what you actually want. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, so now uh, we have dealt with this uh, block diagram control system type of stuff for quite a few classes. I'm sure you are bored. So let me just now try to replace the in in integrator with uh, at least a small signal equivalent of what we want it to be. Okay. So so when you when you say that we have an integrator, uh, by definition, you we say that I mean, at, if you have to explain what is integration to any anybody who don't doesn't know what integration is, what you will say is basically it's a running sum. Okay, so you, you you have a running sum of numbers, so you keep on adding, which means that you are not throwing away information that was coming before some time. You are keeping the information and you are adding on top of it, which means you need memory. You need some sort of memory element. So in a uh, in a uh, in electronic continuous time electronic systems, we have two memory elements. One is capacitor, one is inductor. So if we if we deal with capacitors, how does capacitor integrate? You keep on dumping charge, the voltage keeps on increasing, right? The relationship, which means the relationship between the rate at which you dump charge, that is I, and the voltage, is that of integration. Okay, so ultimately we know that if I have what current source and I dump current into this integrator, so the relationship between I and V, strictly speaking, the relationship between Q and I is that of integration, but the relationship between Q and V is linear. So we can go into V is equal to one over C okay so so now uh, in our case again uh, most of the uh, most of the things that we deal with most of the signals that we uh, deal with are voltages we don't really have current sources as is often the uh, uh, inputs to our systems are voltages which means we need to figure out a way of converting these voltages into currents and we can do that using voltage control current source because our transistor in itself is a voltage control current source okay so i have to replace this with a voltage control current source so the transistor equivalent of this is 
I have an input here. CDI. This is the source. This current is GM VI minus VS. And I have a capacitor. Where should I put this capacitor? I have two places to put, right? I can put it at drain, I can put it at source. We can, put, let's see if we, what happens if we put it at source? And note that we are observing the voltage across the capacitor, right? Because the integration is happening as, as the voltage is getting down from the capacitor. So what is VC? What is VC over VI? In terms of S also you can express. Yes, tell me GM upon. So how many of you agree? And how many of you don't agree? Are still working out? You have a question? Fine. Okay. So uh, yeah. So so the, clearly this is not a this is not an integrator, right? I mean this expression clearly tells you that it's not an integrator. So I I mean why 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 is not an integrator? Or, well, well, and what I'm trying to get at it is that why do you think putting a capacitor as a source does not solve the purpose of integration? Yeah. Just let the output yeah. Uh, he is saying that because the current uh, into the capacitor is not only dependent upon VI, right? It's dependent upon the voltage across the capacitor also. And that is not what you want an integrator to be, right? Other way of thinking about is that if you want an ideal current source, right? You would want the output impedance to be infinity or very high. Looking into the source of a transistor, you don't get output impedance to be very high, right? It's what is the impedance if you look into the source of the transistor? One over GM, right? So, so clearly putting a, your capacitor at the source will, will not help, okay? So only other, option that remains is you put it at the drain. By the way, uh, before I move on a slight, uh, another, uh, another advice, there are some common configurations that we, I, I have already uh, mentioned in the home assignment, right? So the configurations like these, right? So again, this is a digression, not a part of this discussion. Uh, So what is the current? What is the voltage at this node? What is the output impedance looking at these nodes? What is the output impedance looking into the source drain, uh, right? Under the condition of you have some resistance some at the output, there are only five or six possible combinations by putting one, one con uh, voltage control current source and resistances around it, right? So I would, I mean, I would advise strongly to buy hard them because we'll be using it time and time again. The reason, I mean, you can always say that I'll do the algebra uh, on the day of exam. You can, but just, just because you don't do six times four equal to six plus six plus six plus six every time, you don't learn tables for some reasons. This is also equivalent to learning the table, right? So you'll be using it multiple times. So it's better to use uh, by heart those things. Okay, so uh, this is if source is grounded. So this is GM times VI, and you have a capacitor here. So this voltage is V naught is minus GM by SC. Times, yeah. Okay. So uh, now let's put our 
this transconductor with a capacitor inside the loop. I'll replace omega u by s with this. Okay. B. Okay, so now, uh, can you tell me whether, uh, what, I mean, by simply replacing omega u by s with this, to the first order, will this work? For the zeroth order, will this work? The first thing that you have to see is the, whether the sense of the feedback is right. Always in a negative feedback group, if, and if you're putting it together yourself or you are evaluating somebody, a loop which somebody else has put together for you, the first thing that you have to examine whether is whether the sense of the feedback is right. So number one, is the sense of the feedback right? How will you figure out sense of the feedback? Break the loop or you can intuitively think that I have given an excursion anywhere, anywhere in the loop and see what comes back. Right, so let's give and break, I mean, where, where do you want me to break it? B, fine, let's break somewhere else. I mean, we have been breaking it at B all the time. So let me break it at the output here, right? And I apply, an excursion here, this goes up, this goes up, this goes down, which means this goes up, right? So clearly this is a, not a negative feedback, it's a positive feedback system, right? So it's getting reinforced, or whatever excursions you are uh, trying to nullify. So I'll have to change the sign somewhere. I mean, block diagrammatic representation, it's easy, you can just flip it here. Okay, uh, sense of the feedback is fine. So that is number one. Uh, number two, how is this still? I mean, is now is it the same as this omega u by s kind of? Uh, okay, so why don't you tell me? So let's, I have, so now tell me. Fine. Tell me what will happen to the current. Decrease, sir. Yeah, but current decreasing means incremental current flowing in opposite direction, right? So if V decreases, right? If you assume V to be incremental, V is decreasing means V is going negative. Incrementally V is going negative, which means GMV term is negative. If GMV is term is negative, then the direction of the current is flipping. Right, so then uh, your V not increases. Right? Okay. So now uh, comment on whether now everything is exactly what my previous block diagrammatic representation looked like. What am I saying here? Well, I mean, what did I do? I replaced omega u by s with, with this block. Okay, so now is this a good enough substitute for that block? If yes, why? If not, why? Yeah, meaning what? 
Okay, which means yes, all the statements are right. So how is this different from in terms of uh, in, in in terms of the type of source? How is it different from omega U or S ideal integrator? We'll get to poles. Uh, so, pardon? Yeah. Oh, that we can do. We can still do it. Omega would be very high in this case also, but it's not because of the degree of something. It's fundamentally, this is different from the earlier block. What did I say? Omega, when you put a block and mark it as omega u or s or whatever, what is that block? What type of block is that? Voltage controlled? Voltage source. Now, what type of block is this? The current source, right? Clearly, the output impedance of this is infinity at DC and capacitive at any other non zero frequency, right? So, this is not an ideal integrator. Okay. So, if we have to make it an ideal integrator, I'll have to break it and again buffer it, right? So that why is this not an ideal integrator? As, as he pointed out, if this is connected, that I am dumping charge, but the charge is leaking out, right? So in an ideal integrator, you should always be dumping charge and there should be a linear relationship between I and V or other I and Q, right? So in this case, there is not you are this the source is dumping, but something is getting leaked out also, right? So you have to stop that leakage part. So Again, easy way to do that is like I'll say I'll just put a voltage control voltage source here, in, input input impedance to be infinite, no leakage, and if this is V V one, so this is let's say unit again, one times V one. Okay, so this gives you a. Now this is an ideal integrator, and also since I have replaced it with a voltage source. At, at V naught, output impedance of the voltage source is zero. So this is exactly what my omega u by s was supposed to do. Okay, there's no difference between when I write something as omega u by s and I realize it with control sources. This is what I mean. Now it's a different story. How do you make ideal voltage sources? That we'll see. So, but let's assume we have made. So in this case, what is my loop gain? Break the loop, find out and tell me. Okay, GM by K. Yeah, that makes sense because again, you break the loop, you break the loop at V and you see what is V1. If we apply a phase voltage, it will be minus GM by. Yeah, right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the V1 will be minus GM by. SC and then you buffer it and there is a voltage division of one over K and that comes back. So return ratio or in this case loop gain is GM over KSC, right? So uh, let me write it in this form, SC. So now what is then uh, omega U loop? Pardon? GM by KC. Okay, so if I have to now sketch my loop gain, so it should be 20 dB per decade all the way till GM by K. Okay, fine. So what will be the uh, what will be my uh, H infinity? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, what will be my H infinity? Ideal integrator, yes. Yeah? No, why? 
Why h infinity should be infinity? What is what is h infinity? H infinity is v not over v i under infinite gain condition. Let's see. v not over v i when is equal to no change from omega u by s. This is exactly equal to omega u by s scenario, right? This is equal to k. But mind you, h infinity is always k, right? But uh, in this configuration, because it, by definition, h infinity is when l tends to infinity. But in reality, in this in our in this particular configuration, what is v naught over v i for a step input? No, I'm not into okay for at time t equal to infinity. Should be k, right? No change. Now, what I am saying is that let me do one thing. Let me change this gain of this voltage source from one to let's say I change it to alpha times t one. Now comment on v not over vi as steady state. Again, at steady state, what do you think? At, what is the gain? Steady state means DC, right? What is the gain at DC of the loop? Same old story, right? At DC, what is the gain? Infinity. If gain is infinity at DC, what will be V naught over VI at steady state? It will be K, right? So this is. Input even when with equal to k, even with alpha times alpha times v1 as the VCVS. Does it make sense? Yes, no. So I change something in the loop, I change the gain of the VCVS, but my steady state output didn't change. Why? Exactly, right? So uh, as you pointed out, yeah, I mean, we are changing something in the forward path. Forward path already has infinite gain, so nothing should change at DC, right? So, but what changes? Yeah, right, time constant changes, I, in other words, uh, other way of uh, saying the same thing is, if I write out the loop gain, what is the loop gain now? My L of S, is, what is L of S now? You already know the earlier L of S, just alpha tell, times yeah, times alpha times GM by SKC. So if alpha is less than one, what will happen to this loop gain? Plot, it will simply shift to the left. Right, and this point will be alpha times gm by kc. So, in other words, your omega u loop will change if alpha is less than one. Right, so this alpha is less than one. If alpha is less than one, the omega u loop will reduce. Your time constant will increase, which means that the system will settle slowly, but it will eventually settle to whatever it's supposed to. Okay, so omega u loop. So essentially, your how fast the system settles is determined by what is happening at omega u loop, and where does the system settle to is determined by what is happening around DC for DC input, right? For step inputs, the statement is true for step step inputs, right? So where does it settle to ultimately depends on obviously the DC characteristics and how fast it settles to depends on the high frequency characteristics in this particular in the first order case is. It, uh, that is equivalent to omega u u. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so in this particular case, you are saying capacitor will hold some charge and that voltage will appear. Correct, yes. So, okay, good question. So, he's he, what he's alluding to is that uh, if I change this alpha, this capacitor was already, I mean, let's say I change this alpha on the fly, right? I, it was one initially, then I changed it to 0.5. Right, so I um, so this capacitor was holding some charge, right? So this capacitor was holding some charge, which means the capacitor was holding some voltage. Okay, so some voltage was there, and I now change alpha from one to 0.5. So shouldn't we not get affected? In other words, okay. I mean, first you tell me, then I will say other words. It's a very valid question, right? We agree. So the I mean, let's take some numbers, right? So let's say the when alpha equal to one, uh, Vi was let's say one volt, V naught was k volt, right? Is k k times Vi, or if Vi is one volt, it's k. You had a gain of one, which means the voltage at V one V naught was also k. Now I changed alpha from one to 0.5. So shouldn't B not go to K by two? Correct, exactly, right? The feedback voltage will get manipulated and eventually then what will happen? Where will the loop settle? It will settle to K, which means what will happen to V1? Will it, it will increase, right? It has to increase. So ultimately what will happen to V1? V1 will jump from whatever K to 2K. Eventually it will settle to 2 Right, so again, I mean, error connection mechanism, loop will do anything that it is that is in its power to ensure that virtual round holds, right? So input of the error amplifier goes to zero if the loop gain is infinity. So anything that needs to change for that to happen will happen. Yeah, exactly. So that how how fast this 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 change will happen? That you can now just also without doing any calculation, tell me what will be the time constant of this slope from k to two k? Time constant, first order system. What is it? First order system. How does time constant relate to loop gain? Yeah, omega you loop, right? One over omega you loop, right? So, so what is the what was the property of the system after it changed? What was omega you loop? So alpha times gm by kc. If alpha equal to 0.5 is gm by 2 kc. So essentially, the, this time constant, the rate at which your system will settle from k to 2k, or rather v1 will settle from k to 2k, will be at the rate of tau equal to one over gm by 2 kc. Okay, so this is the power of evaluating loop gain once right if you evaluate loop gain once you can basically hypothesize about anything that is going to have happen to the circuit without really getting into the algebra anymore you have to understand the loop gain once or plot the loop gain once okay otherwise for each each excursions you have to write separate set of sets of algebra yes Infinity, yeah, infinity. ideally infinity. So ah, okay, so even if you change alpha, is the loop gain is the loop gain at DC getting changed? No, right? Because ultimately the infinity is being imposed at at uh, infinity at DC is being imposed by this action of this. So as he pointed out a few minutes back, that what happens if you have two gain blocks in the loop? Right, so in this case, clearly this voltage control voltage source capacitor is the boss. Right, at least at DC. Okay. Uh, okay. No, right. So in this time constant, in this case, alpha goes from one to point five, right? The one so that yeah, yeah. If alpha increases, time constant decreases. Yes, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Uh, or in other words, you can think of 
I can subsume this alpha into GM and I say that I want GM to be high. That is also I can do, right? So essentially see what is happening. This is your loop gain is essentially alpha times GM by KC, right? So increasing alpha is equivalent to say that, I mean, I can, you are right, I, ultimately I want to increase alpha. I can also say that if alpha is equal to one and I manipulate this current source as alpha times GMB, right? So it, it is equivalent to saying that I mean, I can want to increase GM, right? So how you increase, if you have more variables, there are obviously more options to increase. But yes, ultimately I will want alpha to be high, yes. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But the good thing here is that uh, the system is not getting affected, at least the final steady state is not being affected with alpha is dependent on ambient conditions, right? If alpha, let's say is uh, some, uh, you have designed alpha using transistors and everything where alpha can be dependent on ambient conditions, it, it really doesn't uh, bother us. Alpha can be 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0.8, 1.2 tomorrow. I don't really care. Output will always settle because that is not what is determining the final settling. But sure, it's determining at the rate at which it's settling. Uh, in cases where we are bothered about the rate, then we'll have to be uh, uh, we'll have to be more uh, thorough. But for most of these cases, it's fine. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. <laughs>